Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today is Friday, April 28th, 2023. And today's show is going to be a little bit different. I'm not compiling all kinds of headlines and putting together. Um, they're actually just going to be two videos. I want to preface them first. It, the first one is going to be the SEC. And Gary Gensler and the SEC made a video yesterday and put out a video yesterday explaining what securities are. And basically what they're trying to do is win over the public and explain why they're going to take action against, say, Coinbase or other crypto companies because of the digital assets that they list on their exchanges, their platforms, or people are buying, selling, and trading. And in it, he's basically saying no matter what you call a security, even if you call it something else, a commodity, digital asset, money, currency, it is still a security. And he makes this weird comparison to a dog and a fish. You'll see in a minute. Well, they served Coinbase with a Wells notice. And Coinbase obviously sat on it for a little bit and decided to reply in also a video form. And in that video, Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase, he explains how he started Coinbase and why he started Coinbase. And in the second half of the video, Paul Graywall, the legal director of Coinbase, he explains to the SEC that they're going to fight whatever charges that the SEC comes down on Coinbase with. Any lawsuits, any charges, any accusations, they're going to fight tooth and nail. And the remarkable thing about this is he says that, look, if you do this, you're going to hurt your reputation because they feel that they're 100% in the right. And if the SEC loses this, which he thinks they will, it's going to hurt the credibility of the SEC. It's quite phenomenal. The reason why I'm not going to go through all kinds of just quick headlines today, and I wanted you to hear both videos and the conversation around this, is because I think this is the start of a very big battle. And there is this comment in the Gary Gensler video comments, because Gary Gensler posted this video on Twitter. And one of the comments I thought was quite remarkable, and it kind of framed like why we have to think about regulations and rules in regards to this technology. And here's the comment. At digital underscore Monad, he put this comment under Gary Gensler's post. He said, to clarify why we, the crypto space, is pissed off, here's an example of a law that updated to reflect changes in technology. In 1901, the first speed limit was set at 12 miles an hour. Imagine a world where all of the interstate commerce and all delivery followed that law. Imagine it taking 5x more time for an online package to arrive. All innovation in logistics and distribution, engine technology, stunted to appease the 12 mile an hour law. The laws changed. It's ridiculous. We have a precedence for changing laws that reflect technology, and we demand better. Americans are aware that every person with a cell phone can develop an interoperable, high-quality application. These applications can now tap into existing applications, which may be financial. Your demands that everyone with a cell phone spends millions of dollars in legal fees to register, just to be told they can't make a high-quality application using currently available technology that's already here. This is why innovation is being destroyed in the United States. Teams are moving offshore, and we're demanding you get fired. Again, in reply to Gary Gensler. And that's really interesting, because remember, the debate around digital assets is that they might be a security, but they also could at the same time be a commodity. They also could at the same time be a currency or money or transfer of value or wealth. They're acting like multiple things at the same time and none of them at the same time. And therefore, the laws have to change to accommodate this new technology. And just because the laws don't change doesn't mean this new technology doesn't exist and that this innovation doesn't happen. Basically, the cat's out the bag. We open Pandora's box when it comes to technology and digital assets and security and privacy. So the laws need to change. There has to be a way forward. And that's why this is so important. This is the start of a conversation that is going to last, I think, quite some time, but also there's going to be winners and losers. There'll be clear definitions of if digital assets and cryptocurrencies and this technology, blockchain technology, will be able to innovate here in the United States in a free, open manner, or the SEC is going to squash that technology and that innovation. And at the same time, if the SEC loses this, I think Paul Gray was correct that the SEC's reputation is going to be damaged. And then companies are going to go after the SEC because of the inflexibility of understanding how things are progressing in current times with technology and innovation and developments. And so maybe the SEC just turns into a toothless shark, toothless tiger, toothless bear. You know what I'm saying? Something with no bite, not something with no power. Anyway, here are the two conversations. First, let's listen to Gary Gensler and the SEC talking about what a security is. And then I want you to listen to Brian Armstrong and Paul Graywall of Coinbase. And I want you to listen to their reply to the SEC 
and why they're going to fight this tooth and nail. This is a longer episode. I apologize. But for the podcast listeners, this is something that you might not stumble on if you're not listening to YouTube or on Twitter quite a bit. So I want to make sure that you got it straight to you. Enjoy. What do the securities laws have to do with goldfish? Many places around the country, we're required to use a leash when you walk your dog. Well, let's just say you get stopped because you're walking Rover unleashed. What do you think would happen if you told the police officer that Rover is actually a goldfish? You'd still get a citation, and that's because the law cares about what something actually is not what you call it. Well, the same thing is true in the securities markets. As Justice Thurgood Marshall put it so well, Congress's purpose in enacting the securities laws was to regulate investments in whatever form they are made and by whatever name they are called. That's why Congress's definition of securities includes more than 30 items, such as stocks, bonds, notes, and something called investment contracts. An investment contract exists when you invest money in a common enterprise with a reasonable expectation of profits to be derived from the efforts of others. Intermediaries for investment contracts, whether they're exchanges, brokers, dealers, clearinghouses, they need to comply with the securities laws and register with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Instead, many crypto platforms are just pretending that these investment contracts that they offer are more like goldfish. And the lack of compliance by these crypto platforms means that you don't have basic investor protections. These are things like rule books and surveillance to prevent fraud manipulation or appropriate custody and yes, segregation of customer assets so they don't get misused or abused or simply become the property of the platform, especially if it goes into bankruptcy. And you lack basic protections as customers that you aren't just trading against the house. Further, many of these crypto platforms combine the activities of an exchange, broker dealer, and clearinghouse under the same roof. And when a platform doesn't register these functions, that puts investors like you at risk. When a platform combines these functions, that creates conflicts of interest that undermine our time-tested investor protections. Crypto markets suffer from a lack of regulatory compliance. It's not a lack of regulatory clarity. As we alleged in a recent action, one crypto platform executive knew the law so well that he actually advised issuers to scrub specific language from their web pages in an effort to pretend that their tokens weren't investment contracts. You could say, in other words, they tried to say that their dogs were goldfish. It doesn't matter if you call yourself onshore or offshore. If you make securities available to American investors, you must comply with American laws. The law is clear. If you're a securities exchange, clearinghouse, broker, or dealer, you must come into compliance, register with us, and deal with conflicts of interest and disclose important information. For 90 years, these laws have helped protect investors like you. You might say, they're an investor's best friend. To the chair, other commissioners and staff of the Securities and Exchange Commission. I want to thank you for this opportunity to speak directly to you. My name is Paul Graywall. I'm Coinbase's Chief Legal Officer. And with me is Brian Armstrong, the Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of Coinbase. I'd like to start by turning things over to Brian to say a few words. Brian? Yeah, thanks, Paul. So again, thank you for the opportunity to respond to this Wells notice. And I thought I'd share a few words just about the founding story of Coinbase and why I decided to base it here in the U.S. and how we've proactively sought out compliance over the last 11 years. So back in 2012, I had just read the Bitcoin white paper. And, you know, something clicked in my head when I first read this, that this might be a very important technology breakthrough that could help update the financial system globally. You know, I had had a firsthand experience seeing 
um, how difficult and challenging certain aspects of the financial system were. I had been a software engineer at Airbnb and I had seen how difficult it was to send and receive payments globally to 190 countries. Um, it was slow and expensive and difficult. Um, I had lived in Argentina actually for a year um, studying abroad and working abroad and I had seen what it, a country looked like that had gone through hyperinflation where people had lost trust in uh, the currency and they didn't have access to good financial services. They couldn't get loans, for instance, to buy a car or, or a home. And so when I read the Bitcoin white paper, I, I thought this might be an important breakthrough, something on the order of what we saw with the internet, a new global and decentralized system that could uh, make it easier for people to transmit value and, and update financial services globally. The next decision I had was, um, where do I want to start this company? Once, once I realized I wanted to start a company, and you know, I, I went to some early Bitcoin meetups in San Francisco and people were telling me, you know, you shouldn't base it in the US, it's gonna to be too challenging, there's 50 state regulators and multiple federal regulators and you should start it in Hong Kong or Singapore. And um, there was other firms that were starting at that time that did that. But I made the choice at that moment to start the company in the US because I knew that even if it was more difficult, the US was a major market, there was respect for rule of law, um, the U.S. was a financial hub, a technology hub. It was a place where I felt entrepreneurs could work in good faith with regulators to help define clear rules for new industries as they emerged. And so I was lucky enough to raise some venture capital money. You know, the prototype on my laptop nights and weekends um, turned into a small company and we went off to the races. You know, 11 years later, fast forward, um, this strategy of proactively working with regulators in, in cases where it really wasn't clear what we should do because it was a new industry, we tried to do the right thing in the absence of clarity and um, show, demonstrate good faith effort that would allow us to bring this technology in a safe and thoughtful way to hopefully a billion people someday. So here we are um, as a public company, I think we've made enormous strides and I think the message I'd, I'd really like to leave with the commissioners and the SEC is that uh, we're committed to working in, within the regulatory perimeter. We want to see uh, a clear market structure for trading crypto securities. Not all crypto assets are securities. There's also crypto commodities, there's stable coins, there's crypto that's artwork. We're gonna work with multiple regulators uh, to make this industry safe and trusted. And um, a Wells notice at this stage when there is not a clear rule book is not constructive and it's not good for America. Um, we are prepared to defend that position in court, but it doesn't have to come to that. We welcome a true dialogue about a workable path forward for our industry. Now I'll hand it back over to Paul. Coindace has been talking to the SEC about our business for many years now, including sharing our legal views on our asset listing and staking services. We have repeatedly asked the SEC for its own views on how securities laws might apply to Coinbase and our industry. And to be candid, we've mostly gotten silence in response. But we were very proud when two years ago, in April 2021, the SEC declared effective Coinbase's registration statement allowing Coinbase shares to be sold to millions of retail investors. That moment came after months and months of review by the SEC. The SEC asked a lot of questions about our business and our services, which looks very much like the business we have today. And we answered those questions in detail. That included questions about our asset listing, our staking service, Coinbase wallet, and all of the legal analysis we'd done related to those products. We understand that new technology can pose challenges for regulators. We understand new laws are sometimes needed. That is why Coinbase's core commitment to regulatory compliance has never wavered. We welcome new regulation, but we believe that regulation needs to be created in a fair way and shared with the public. I understand that the Wells Notice means that the staff has reached a preliminary determination that aspects of our company's core business violate securities laws. So I want to be very direct with you. Coinbase does not list securities. We use a robust process based on SEC guidance to make sure that we don't list securities. We reject some 90% of the assets that we review. It might be better for our short-term business to be less conservative than we are, but that is not who we want to be as a company. That's why, as proud as we were when we became a U.S. public company just two years ago, we were just as disappointed to receive the Wells Notice from the SEC a few weeks ago. In the past two years, Coinbase's business really has not changed in any fundamental way. We remain just as committed to following the rules and engaging collaboratively with the SEC on the best way to regulate our industry. But we ask that those rules do not change midstream and without any notice to the industry. As Brian said, Coinbase's approach to regulation hasn't changed. The law itself has not changed either. 
even though we would welcome legislation or rulemaking for our industry. So what has changed? When Coinbase became a public company, the view of the SEC appeared to be that the SEC lacked statutory authority to regulate businesses like Coinbase. In May 2021, just one month after we became a public company, that's what Chair Gensler testified to Congress. He said, quote, the exchanges trading in these crypto assets do not have a regulatory framework either at the SEC or our sister agency, the CFTC. And the very next day, he said that the SEC would work with Congress to develop such a framework. Specifically, he said, the SEC will be working with Congress if they see fit to try to bring some protection. The Wells notice we received appears to say the opposite just two years later, as the SEC staff contends that significant aspects of Coinbase's businesses are now subject to and violate federal securities laws. This new view doesn't come from any change in Coinbase's business since becoming a public company two years ago. Coinbase is at its core the very same company today that we were on April 14th, 2021. Nor does this new view come from the SEC staff's discovery of something that Coinbase concealed or misrepresented in our extensive engagement with the SEC, including during the registration process. Absolutely nothing like that has been suggested. So what accounts for this change? In December 2022, following the collapse of FTX, a digital asset trading platform that is entirely dissimilar to Coinbase, the SEC appears to have adopted a new view. That month, Chair Gensler said in an interview, I feel that we have enough authority, I really do, in this space to regulate crypto companies. Of course, in the time between this statement and the prior ones, Congress did not pass any new legislation to fill the statutory void that Chair Gensler previously acknowledged, and the SEC has not tried to fill the void itself through rulemaking, even though the industry and Coinbase specifically have repeatedly and formally requested that the SEC do so. To be candid, this is pretty startling for Coinbase as a compliant U.S. public company to watch unfold. And it is all the more startling given the different views expressed by other regulators. The CFTC has recently formally identified Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and USDC, and other stable coins as commodities, not securities. When the Department of Justice charged a former Coinbase employee for improperly front-running asset listing decisions, it declined to bring any securities-related charges. Meanwhile, Coinbase is regulated. For example, Coinbase holds a bit license from New York Department of Financial Services, and part of that bit license means we cannot and do not list securities on our platform. We believe that legislation or rulemaking is needed if the SEC wants to expand its oversight of our industry, especially contrary to the views of other federal and state regulators. But regardless, we remain ready, willing, and eager to engage with the SEC on any topic about how securities laws can or should apply to our industry. Just last summer, the SEC asked Coinbase to develop a proposal for crypto companies to register with the SEC if, and that's an important if, they want to list securities. Coinbase does not list securities today, but we would like to do so using an SEC registered platform. And we certainly would like to get rid of the cloud now hanging over our industry, given the SEC's new view of its jurisdiction over our industry. But it's not clear how that view applies in practice to specific products and services. So we said absolutely yes to the SEC's request to work on a framework for crypto companies to register. And after months and months of Coinbase sharing ideas with the SEC, on the eve of the meeting where the SEC had promised to give us feedback and its views for the first time, instead the SEC called off the discussions altogether. A few weeks later, after just two cursory depositions, we got a broad yet fundamentally vague Wells notice. We still do not know exactly what it is that we do that is of concern to the SEC. Ultimately, as Chair Gensler told Congress less than two years ago today, no law or regulation authorizes the SEC to charge Coinbase for the alleged violations in the Wells Notice. No law at all. So we are on the brink of a fight that doesn't need to happen and frankly shouldn't happen. At a time when we could be working together to provide clarity and stability to an important new industry for consumers and investors, not to mention the US economy as a whole, we are instead gearing up for litigation. Coinbase does not want to litigate against the SEC, and the SEC should not want to litigate this case either. 
Litigation will put the SEC's own actions on trial, erode public trust in the SEC's mission, undermine any incentive for market participants to engage with the SEC, and put at risk broad aspects of the SEC's enforcement program. So we're asking you directly not to waste the SEC's limited and important resources on unnecessary litigation that will only harm the very investors that the SEC is mission bound to protect. The SEC has other productive options available to it. If the SEC believes that certain digital assets are securities or certain parts of Coinbase's business should be registered, Coinbase continues to welcome that dialogue. But at a minimum, those assets need to be identified. We know that Chair Gensler has said that he believes most digital assets are securities. But even if that were true, Coinbase does not list most assets. We reject more than 90% of the assets considered for listing, and there are mountains more that we don't consider at all. The better path here is for the SEC to initiate rulemaking, or at least respond to Coinbase's pending petition for rulemaking. If the SEC believes that Coinbase should set up a registered securities trading platform for certain parts of its business, Coinbase is open to that discussion too but it must be rooted in a fair and proper application of securities laws. And there must be an actual path to register, which does not exist today. Coinbase will defend itself vigorously in litigation if it comes to that, but it does not have to come to that. We will show up at your offices any day, any time to discuss a workable path forward for our industry, but we won't find that path without true dialogue. I'd like to again thank the chair, commissioners, and staff of the SEC for your time and careful consideration of these important issues. And with that, I'd like to turn things back over to Brian for a final word. Thanks, Paul. So I'll just end with a closing thought here, which is that um, Coinbase has always been committed to being built in the U.S. within the regulatory perimeter. Uh, we've proactively sought out regulation, and we're committed to working with regulators all over the world. A Wells notice to the company at this stage is not constructive and it's not in America's interests. There are many aspects of the current rules which really are not clear for operating a crypto business in the US. Our petition to the SEC made those points and I think it deserves um, a thoughtful and clear response and dialogue with the industry. So we would like to continue to work with you to make a, uh, a regulated market for crypto securities to be traded in the US. I think our interests are aligned in doing that. Um, and we hope that that's the path that we can go down versus a path of litigation and enforcement. Thank you. Hey everyone, the bull run is coming. It's coming quick. And you need to be up to date on everything that's happening in the Web3 space. So please follow us on Twitter and like, subscribe, share these videos so we can keep you up to date daily on Web3 News.